All right, this video is going to cover how to start looking at sketching circular objects. So and we've got a number six here on activity 2.1 we'll use as our guide. As far as uh, taking a look at this uh, particular sketch, this sketch here is usually uh, a little troublesome for students because um, you don't have your traditional kind of isometric grid in there. So as far as your height and everything, so it's really just a orthographic grid that's kind of been placed in isometric view. It's a 2D ortho grid that's kind of been laid down. So I figured I'd cover a few little techniques to kind of help you out. In terms of this, uh, as far as your uh, width, so setting up a glass box, you can kind of see from the top, you got one, two, three, four, and then as you kind of go along, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, so about 13 overall on your width of your grid. So I'll go ahead and set this up. And then as far as the height goes, I usually do about uh, four for this one. So this part is definitely proportionally this part is definitely longer or uh, wider than what it is in, in uh, height. And then using the uh, four grid squares, one, two, three, four, overall depth, I probably got about four on the depth as well. And then I can go ahead and enclose my glass box. So that's going to kind of be the overall um, glass box for us. We're going to add a little bit more in here just to kind of help us out. I'm going to start with the top face. So here I'm going to add another little glass box. One, two, three, four. Draw in the front face. And then it's going to be this little part that sticks up off there. It's going to be two. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in. It's almost going to be like two, like a smaller box. And then I'm going to go ahead and outline this part. So then it kind of looks more like a little glass box on top of a longer glass box. Same depth. Here as far as setting up for uh, circular features, so go ahead and find your the midpoint. You're going to go ahead and you're going to draw an X across the corners. So it'll locate the center. And then from here about three quarter or about two thirds of the way along these points you're going to set some tick marks and then what you can kind of do is you you're going to be able to see that um, from here you're going to end up you want to make sure that your lines when you roll these out are going to be tangent or means they're going to touch the edges of the box and when I do this it'll pass through it so I'll get kind of a, an ellipse kind of shape as I draw this, the way that's how circles look in an isometric orientation. As far as this, this will come down. And then you're going to see it's going to kind of curve around. So if I went through and kind of on the bottom, if I did the same kind of scenario and found, so I've had that little X there on the bottom, put a little point on there. So I'm going to see that uh, as this kind of gets transferred down, this will come down like this, but uh, about in the middle of this, I'm going to see I'm going to pass through that point and then touch the, touch the edges of the box and have that being shown there. As far as the hole, same kind of scenario. You can go ahead and, and block out for the hole, draw in on the X, put in your little points about two-thirds of the way, and then go ahead and make sure that the, the hole is going to touch on the top, on the tangent points it should. This is going to come down and have a little bit of a curved edge as it comes. Now in terms of where, um, as far as what we're looking at, these this line will start extending down. You'll actually see this line on your box is going to kind of extend kind of almost back behind this point. 
And then where do I start seeing a point of tangency? Well here, one, two, looks like right about here, right before I get in the curve about two off of the box, the edge of the box, so I go one, two, here's my point of tangency, here's another point of tangency, I'll mark those. I'll go ahead and mark them on the top and bottom there. And then, same kind of scenario as I start to look, so from the point I can kind of like draw the X, so I'll put that along there, about two thirds of the way. So you'll notice I'll see these points, and then I can go ahead and make the touch there, drawing that top part in. Same kind of thing on the bottom. So I'm going to see right there, and this will come down, so I'm going to see this kind of curve around, touch the outside edge of the box, and then I can go ahead and kind of draw in making these connections, and that will kind of give us our our object that we had drawn as far as shading goes they have a little bit of shading here inside the hole to kind of set it off um, as far as shading goes this one here i kind of do a little bit of light shading just a little bit on the um, kind of edges and everything so the front and the side it's a pretty symmetrical smooth part so you'll see just a little bit of shading it'll kind of evenly light for the most part. And then that way that kind of sets it off, at least some of the other faces a little bit different than the others. But as far as setting up, same kind of scenario, follow along with the PowerPoint, same kind of thing. So laying out your uh, glass box, X, finding the points along the, along the lines, about two thirds of the way from the center, making sure that your arcs, when you draw them in, they hit, hit your points of tangency. And it kind of makes, like I said, it makes a, a lip, an ellipse kind of shape or an oval kind of shape. So based upon how this isometric grid has been uh, oriented. So you can use this to help you out with some of the other circular objects so that you and your students will be sketching in the curriculum.